I invite the brethren once again to stand up. And we're going to open our Bibles in the book of Exodus, chapter 12, from verse number 8. Exodus 12, from verse 8. Right at the beginning of the Bible, second book. Amen. Here it is. They, they shall eat the flesh on that night, roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water, but roasted in fire, its head with its legs and its entrails. You shall let none of it remain until morning, and what remains of it until morning you shall burn it with fire fire, and thus you shall eat it with a belt on your waist, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, so you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover, for I will pass through the land of Egypt on that night, and I will strike all the firstborn in the land of Egypt both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, the blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be on you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. So this day shall be to you a memorial, and you shall keep it as a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it as a feast by an everlasting ordinance. The church may be seated. My brethren, we've had a few days ago this feast that uh, was celebrated as more precisely in the midst of Christianity, which is the Passover. And it is interesting that throughout years, Passover began to lose its essence, its origin, and its purpose. And then the habits, the, the human benefits entered, then religiousness, men's own interests, and then what was the project of God to show to man, to bring man to an understanding regarding sal the salvation of man, it began to be left as not a, as a priority. And man's project became uh, the priority. And if we anal analyze the Bible, all of it has only one topic from beginning to end. It is to awake man, is to bring man to live a genuine gospel so that man could live inside of this project that would lead him to heaven. There are no shortcuts. There are no coincidences. Uh, things didn't just happen and uh, the gospel began to adapt and change. It doesn't exist. The project of God is eternal. The project of God is simple, it's pure, it's unique. Any part of the Bible, any verse of the Bible leads men to understand this. 
If we pick up chapter 12 of Exodus, we will see the entire project of God inside of this chapter alone. We're going to see the doctrine being introduced to men as an illustration. The Old Testament is all like this. is to show men what God wants to do in the life of man. On chapter 12, we're going to see everything. We're going to see the moment in which man, man is becomes aware of salvation with Jesus. The moment in which man is born to Jesus. Man dies to this world and is born in Jesus. Right here in the second verse. This is going to be the beginning of the months. It's going to be the beginning of the months of the year. At the moment, was a beginning for Israel. It was a beginning. Israel was living 430 years, imprisoned, captive. I'm not going to speak all of them, but I'm going to quickly speak of a, a few. Israel had no ex uh, hope anymore for deliverance, for being what was the promise of God, of being a nation, of being a people, of receiving God as their God. How many years? It's so much time. There are many years. But God didn't forget in the same way that God hasn't forgotten about us. In the same way that God has not forgotten about your trial or your difficulty, your plea, your pain, God remembers. You may even feel like you are, have been defeated by the trials, but God never forgets. God one day took you out of the world and place you in this, in this path and opened up your eyes and today you are living a new life in Jesus. Here we are going to see the project of God, Jesus as the only Savior. Jesus as the only Savior. Jesus is our mediator. He's the only one. There's no father or mother or the friend. It's only, this is only one path. When God spoke to Moses, he said, Mo Moses, tell the people that at the 12th of this month, take each, take each one for themselves one lamb. It's not just any lamb. It's not two lambs. It's just one lamb. It's Jesus. Jesus is the eternal Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, said, Here is this, the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world. This Lamb here was supposed to take the sin away from Israel. But Jesus, no. Jesus takes away the sin of the entire world. We're going to see also the doctrine of the body. If the, if the family is too small for an entire lamb, so then take a, a, a neighbor according to the number of the members, add it all up for a lamb. So in the body. That's what we're doing here. Living in the presence of the Lord. This spiritual environment, living in the church, depending on the prayer of the brother and the assistance, depending on the laying of hands and the receiving from the part of the Lord, the spiritual gifts, they help us, they direct us, they give us the assurance. This is what living in the body. It's not living isolated. It's not living away from the Lord. It's not living alone. But it is living here in this spiritual environment. Because Jesus, when he comes back, he's going to take his bride. The church is the body of Christ. And we need to be linked to the body of Christ. 
It's very dangerous when we are living isolated. It's very dangerous when we live alone, away from this spiritual environment. It's very dangerous. We become an easy target to the, en to the enemy. But when we are here, receiving all the direction of the Lord, living in this harmony, the Lord bless us. And we'll see also the doctrine of the revealed word. In the same way as many others. Oh, and at that night they're going to eat the flesh cooked in fire. The real word. The revealed word. Not the word of life. But the living word. The word that operates in man with efficacy. The word of life is very good. It shows us the path. He introduces us to salvation with Jesus, opens up our eyes so that we may want and desire to be in the presence of God. But the living word, the revealed word, is what shows us the direction and that makes us truly live in, in sanctification because the living word operates with efficacy. Not only history, not only the history of Jesus that died on the cross, that was born and died, no. But the revelation of Jesus Christ, Son of God. And here the Lord instructs Moses so that in that day there will be, it will be made something that would save the Hebrews. They were supposed to take the blood of the lamb and put it on around the posts of the doors. Because at that night, while they were eating, they should be inside of their houses. Because in the night, in the darkness, it's a thick darkness, but in the house of the servant of the Lord, and after the Hebrew, there was light. The Holy Spirit was being poured out. The moment in which you live tonight, uh, today, in our days, the moment of the night, the Lord is pouring out His Holy Spirit without measure towards the, uh, only His church. We're not being deceived. We're not no, uh, without direction. We're here. We're, we're we have our own attire prepared, our shoes on. We are waiting hastily for the arrival of the Lord Jesus. But at that night, the Lord gave the following instruction. Pass the blood on the posts of the door. And when you go to an environment and you see blood at the door, what does that mean? That there was one, there was a death. Isn't it true? There was a death. When you see the, the blood on a bed or on a car, you see that there was a death. Somebody died. Somebody died. It may not have been there, but someplace. But, and that was the sign for the Hebrews. It was a sign so that when the Lord passed, when he saw the blood, he would pass over, which is Passover. The Passover is, is passing over. And at that night, we see that the people of the Lord didn't pass through that moment of pains, the moment in which uh, that there was in Egypt, from the house of Pharaoh all the way to the house of the simplest person. A moment of a lament, of pain, and crying. Nobody could console anybody because the firstborn of everyone died. Where there was no blood passed on the post of the door, there was dead. But the people of the Lord was preserved because the blood was on the outside. This is the Passover. This is what the Lord instructed to Moses to explain to his people. 
and this Passover, even Jesus celebrated this, this in the same way. About 1,500 years later, every year at the same time, the Jews celebrated and they celebrate it to this day in the same way, practically the same way. Because that was a sign for the people of God. And we're going to see many other doctrines here. We're going to stop right here. Jesus, when he participated on his last Passover, Jesus introduced something different. From the birth of, birth of Jesus until the last day of his life, 32 years practically, Jesus participated on this Passover, which was the instruction for the Jews. But Jesus, on his last Passover, when he introduced something different, he called upon his disciples, and there, in the moment of the Passover, which was not a dinner, it was a Passover. It's different. But between a, a just a dinner and Passover, a dinner is a meal that happens later. But at that moment, Jesus introduced there uh, the elements of the Passover was no longer being called Passover. It is now called the Supper of the Lord. Jesus introduces something different. No longer there was the lamb, living or dead, burnt on fire, cooked on fire. There was no uh, bitter herbs anymore. There was not necessarily the tires. That the Lord had uh, explained to Moses, but the Lord, but Jesus introduces two elements: he introduces the bread and the wine. And he says, "This is my body." He picks up the bread, he breaks the bread, and he gives it to his disciples. And he says, "This is my body, broken uh, for you." And he introduces the beginning of the church what the church lives, what was going to be the beginning of the church, the body of Christ. And now he picks up the wine that represented the blood, and he says, this is my blood that will be poured out for you. But Jesus didn't instruct the disciples to has this wine and the blood on the walls or on the doors. What did he say for them to do? That they should eat of the bread and drink wine. Because the church of the Lord does not need to show externally the church of Christ needs to have inside of themselves the presence of the wine. Why? Because the wine outside of the body is a sign of what? Sign of death. But the wine but the blood inside of the man's body means what? It means life. So Jesus introduces two very important things that the church of the Lord, the bread, representing the body of Christ, needed to have the presence of the blood, the wine, which is the Holy Spirit inside of the church, not not ex in an exterior way, not just externally saying, oh, I'm this, I'm that. No. The Church of Christ needs to have Jesus inside of their hearts, in their interior, in their hearts, operating. The Church of the Lord needs to have the Holy Spirit inside of the church flowing with the spiritual gifts, for with the sanctification. Why? Because when the Holy Spirit is inside of the church, in the midst of the church, that's when there is life. But not this life that we have that leads to death, but the eternal life in Jesus. That's what Jesus introduces, this new feast. No longer the Passover that is being exchanged. They removed the lamb, they put a rabbit, 
exchanging the elements of the Passover by chocolate, all of it. It's a lie. The world does this to diminish the worth, oh, the effect, the action of the product of God. So diminish the worth of the Lamb of God that takes the sin away from the world to deceive the children. And the teachers are out there, many parents are out there preaching this lie inside of their own houses and agreeing with this and leaving this, allowing this lie to enter into their houses. You know why? Because th if this lie exists, there is no truth. But Jesus introduced to us this truth, and the truth is this. Is a Passover, is a new covenant, is a new testament, the body of Christ broken for us, and the, lamb, the blood of Christ inside of each one of his servants, which is the Holy Spirit flowing, acting, operating, working your heart, working your mind, uh, making you want to be closer to God making you running, run away from the appearance of evil and allowing to forget and operating what? Um, the feeling of guilt. What causes us to feel the pain, because, which is sin. Because the wage of sin is death, but the free gift of, Lord, of the Lord is eternal life. And this is what going, we're going to do tonight. We're going to participate on the supper of the Lord. And you're going to participate on this great feast introduced by Jesus almost 2,000 years ago. This new covenant in which you who are here tonight because you have been called by God to live this gospel, to be part of this church, the body of Christ, and, that, and so that the Holy Spirit may be inside of you, inside of your heart, inside of your mind controlling your, your life, controlling the way you will act, in it. because when He is inside of us, there is life, eternal life, that all we can only find in Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to read another verse, which is located in, in Corinthians. First letter of Paul to the Corinthians. For... I received from the Lord that that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord, which is on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and he, he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This, is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the, the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment uh, to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. My brethren, the supper is, serves as a revival, an operation of God to give us life, to allow us to remember the coming of the Lord Jesus because the church knows we know the Lord knows only he knows the day and the hour no one else knows but in us there is a desire of the coming of the Lord Jesus and in us there is a desire to leave this world in the same way Israel left Egypt at the right moment determined by God only God knows the day and the hour of our great victory in the meantime, we participate in the Supper of the Lord. We desire, we make mention. Why? Because it is with joy, because the wine operates joy. The action of the wine and the love of man and the body of man is joy. Remove reason. 
the action of the Holy Spirit in the life of the church is exactly the same. Removes reason, removes what's rational and human, and operating us this joy, the joy of salvation, Jesus. We are not drunk. We do not get drunk with alcohol, but we get drunk with the joy of salvation, Jesus Christ. For this, believe in the gospel has to be with joy. If you are living the gospel uh, by force or if it is heavy for you, if it is difficult, you need to pray more to the Lord because the gospel it needs to be lived with joy, with pain for sure, with pain, with trials, with difficulties, but with the knowledge that Jesus is above all things and that our victory is guaranteed, our victory is assured, because the theme of this year speaks of this. We overcame through the blood of the Lamb and through the word of His testimony. Amen? I invite the deacons to be here in the front, and you will be here at this moment examining your life, because God gave you this means. Nobody's going to examine you. The Old Testament, the priest, he examined the lamb. If there was any stain, if, if there was a broken bone, if there was any imperfection. But in the new covenant, in this new pact, man examined himself. So now drink and eat and participate of this which is eternal. Amen. I invite one of the deacons to pray for one of the brethren, brethren to pray for the, the bread and for the wine. Lord God, we pray to you for this moment. We now ask that you sanctify this bread. In the name of the Lord Jesus, amen. Let's sing a song while the elements are being served. All the elements are being served. Wait, because we want to participate all together. Two from the back forwards and two come from the front to, towards the back.
Somebody still waiting to be re to receive the elements. Somebody in the back. Oh, sir, Pastor Saturday, Sabado. Amen. This moment is a private moment, individual, with you and the Lord. It's a moment in which you will be speaking with the Lord, placing your life in the presence of the Lord, asking the Lord for forgiveness. And from this point forward, that you may be a new beginning in the Lamb, in the Old Testament, he lived, he died, and nobody would remember of him. But in Jesus, he is alive in us. The Lamb of God, he overcame. He was victorious. He died, but he was victorious. And he is alive in our lives. Glory to God. So, it's worth for us to be in the presence of the Lord. It's gratifying for us to fight for our salvation. It's gratifying for us to fight for our blessing. There's nothing that could compare with living in the presence of God. I invite those that can to kneel down. If you cannot kneel down, you can remain standing. Amen. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. May peace be with you in this moment. I calm down your lives. This moment. I came to this moment to participate with you. To participate in this supper with you. In this moment, I want to say, I've seen the many trials you have been gone through. You have contemplated the furnaces, the deserts, but I came tonight to say, to teach you 
that you're not alone. I walk with you in the midst of the furnace. I go with you through the rivers in the, de in the desert. I provide to, uh, to you the water and the sustenance so you may not perish. The, your Lord has been with you. And at this instant, I calm down the storm. I give the order to the wind and the sea to calm down so that you may survive, so that you may remain in my presence with joy, with, with glory, with joy, remembering the eternity and remembering of what I told you that it doesn't matter what happens to you here that can compare with the glory that's been prepared for you. Soon, very soon, my son will come back to, to take you back to eternity. And eternity is prepared. You are prepared. The nature is moaning. And I tell you, my brethren, the time is very close. There's no time to waste. Pay attention. The same way as my servants in the Old Testament. Get, be ready for the departure. And tonight, I bring to you the sustenance of the body of my son, the sustenance of the blood of my son, the power so that you can remain standing for this great moment. Do not look at the circumstance, but look and look towards heaven. And may Jerusalem go up to your heart, and soon you will be here with me, participating on the supper with me in the glory, and glorify my name eternally. And I am anxious for this day. There is going to be a great feast. Glorify my name. Today is my banquet for you tonight. Glorify to the one that is almighty, that has power to sustain you and to this point and towards the great day in which we are going to meet in the glory. Amen. We can all participate together, firstly the bread and then of the, bar the wine. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to God. The brethren can sit down. The marriage of the Lamb.
Hallelujah. Your name, Lord. Now we're going to have a word of glorification to our Lord. Hallelujah. We want to give our gratitude, Lord, because you are a wonderful God. Today we participate on the Feast of Salvation. I will praise you because we participated on the wedding of the Lamb. We praise you for everything in the name of Jesus. We're going to finish praying to the Lord for the arrival of Jesus. Glory to God. The church who, Lord, we praise you, give you honors, we glorify the Lord for another night in which we have this privilege of participating in the supper with you, Lord, together with your people, Lord, of the church that one day will be with you in your eternity. Blessed be your name for your for the moving of our Holy Spirit and now meets for the cures and deliverances for the salvation that was once again confirm confirmed in our hearts. Lord, take your people back home under your prote protection. You pray in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our good and eternal Father, and sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out with the people of God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The church can sit down. I'd like to remind the church that this Sunday we have an event with children, intermediate, and adolescents that involves the whole church. It will be 10 o'clock in the morning, a seminar with children, intermediate, and adolescents, parents, and with all our guests. You who are here with us tonight, 
if you came here, you were invited to participate on this event with our children, intermediary, and adolescents. Sunday, 10 o'clock in the morning, we'll have a meeting with the Father in this place. Amen. Saturday night, we have another service of glorification to the Lord at 7.30. Sunday, a seminar at 10. And at 7.30 p.m., another service of adoration and glorification to the Lord. You are all invited. If somebody desires a prayer still, just raise your hand. We are going to give you the proper assistance. Otherwise, uh, peace, peace of the Lord.